Hi. My humans left me, and I've been yelling at Tara about it since yesterday. Now, y'all just got back from vacation. Yes, we did. We went to Orlando and briefly to the scarier parts of Florida. Orlando's kind of a scary part of, Orla of Florida. Yeah, but Orlando, like, you're kind of either in your hotel or at a tourist trap. Yeah, but it's, it's like, it's weird. There's like strip mall, porn, gas station. Yeah, we did see Rachel's Steakhouse right next door to Rachel's adult entertainment. It's weird. Man, Which what we I, thought was fun. When yeah. I... Oh, when, no. Well, <laughs> All right, want me to move the keyboard so you can walk on the desk? Kitty's a little out of sorts because I came back yesterday. Dan is not yet back. He might come in during the bit. And she's just all fucked up by that. Like, why Why did only one human come back? Where's my other human? When I was living down in, in Florida in the early 2000s, yeah, 99, 2000, there was an epidemic down there of um, lingerie modeling salons. What does that mean? That means it was a very poor front for a prostitution operation. Oh. They had a lot of them. See, ostensibly. People, Dan pulled us over at some stand on the side of the road. They were burning garbage. Um, it was a produce stand. They were burning garbage. He was pretty sure it was a meth front. But they had a big sign out front that said boiled peanuts. And he had to have him some boiled peanuts, which they <laughs> scooped into a plastic grocery bag to give to him. They were really bad. I He was I'm, all excited about them. They're mushy and they smell like feet. Yeah, I'm from South Carolina and my parents, my particularly my dad's side of the family, loved the whole boiled peanuts thing, which I never got. And then the whole car smelled like feet because they were in the car. <laughs> they do. They smell awful. Yeah. Why do people eat them? I'm from the South and I don't understand. I don't know. I tried gator. I didn't love gator. But I learned something really interesting. What did you learn? So there's this place in Florida in like the Leesburg area called the Villages. It's like a condo community. One of those places where a lot of retirees live because, you know, Florida is heaven's waiting room. And uh, at the Villages, I guess all the old people tend to drive golf carts around the neighborhood instead yeah. of cars. And they like trick these golf carts the fuck out. Like they're all decorated and shit. But all the golf carts have loofahs hanging over the, uh, off of them. And you think that's just like a weird trend thing, right? No. It's sex code. Yes. No, depending on what color loofah you have hanging off your golf cart, it advertises to your neighbors what kind of freaky activity you'll be up for swingers group stuff whatever yeah this is the thing fucking florida it was a very educational trip jesus christ i also oh i don't have my wand i got chosen by the wand master at harry potter world to get fitted for a wand. It was so cool. Is that code for something or? No, you go to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter and you go to Ollivander's, the wand shop. And you can like go back and see the wand master and he picks someone out of your group and does basically the whole scene from the first Harry Potter movie where like he tries one wand and you fuck up. Like he told me to water his plant and instead it died. So he had to fix it. And then he told me to levitate a book, and instead I broke all his shelves. And then they try a third wand, and, like, all the lights come on, and you get blown with a breeze, and, like, angels sing and stuff. And then they walk you outside, and they're like, would you like to buy the wand for $50? And you're like, uh, of course. I'm the chosen one. Yeah, I would have been like, which one of these makes people stop being idiots? Do you have one of those? I would pay extra for a not-stupid wand. Do we have that? The people that don't know how to walk in public thing. They didn't teach me that spell. So Tara. Oh, Tara. 
I did not get sorted into a house. I still don't know what house that would be. There are people that know that. I don't Ravenclaw. Know how you find that out. Ravenclaw. I, I don't know what house that would be. Ravenclaw. Why? You just you would be Ravenclaw. Okay. Those are like the book nerds, right? Yeah, but they're also kind of the the smart and potentially, you know, lethal kind of very quiet. Honest. See, the wand master said that I was a joyful, peaceful witch who would be a formidable defense against dark magic. Yeah, that's right. I thought Luna Lovegood was a... Jesus, fuck, I can't remember it now. Gryffindor. Wasn't Luna Lovegood a Gryffindor? No. Oh. Anyway, Tara, this this weekend. You can see the kitty in the shot. We have to move you so you're in the shot since you're being cooperative today. This weekend, one of the most amazing things in the history of modern politics happened. Yes, Black Mirror came true. And they asked that guy about it today. And he's like, I really, I really thought I was being as far fetched as I could be. <laughs> Charlie Booker's like. He's like, I, I, I didn't call that. Like, I, I didn't know anything. I really thought we were doing the craziest shit possible. And then if ah, he's a witch, um, let's let's begin each week. Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible things, bring them back here. With something we call, what the fuck is wrong with you? Are you prepared? I know Tara already knows this, but audience, prepare yourselves. And this is coming from Put down your bacon. This is coming from someone who loathes and abhors the use of puns. We already played the rub some bacon on it. That's why it was requested. <laughs> well done. This well this is the greatest pun you were ever going to hear in the history of modern politics. That's saying something. That's Now, when this first came up, lots of people just started floating around the, the phrase pig gate. Yeah, because we to have to make everything this. a gate now. But then someone came up with something so much better. Yes. The best. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you... The Bay of Pigs. The B-A-E. The Bay of yeah. Pigs scandal. This is this is why we created the internet. Just revenge, de drugs, debauchery, and the book that lays Dave bare how PM snubbed to billionaire who funded the Tories for years sparked the most explosive political book of the decade. All right. It's going to need a little explanation for our American audience. If you're in the UK, you're already rolling in the aisles. We'll get there. What happened was Lord Ashcroft, who is another influential member of the of British uh, government, was passed over for a uh, promotion by uh, Prime Minister David Cameron. He's also really, really rich. And vindictive, apparently. And vindictive. So he published a book that alleges that David Cameron, who is currently Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, David Cameron, when he was in, in, in college, how do I put this delicately, Tara? You don't. He fucked a dead pig. Well, kind. He put his genitals in the mouth of a dead pig. The, this. Out of the mouth of babe. <laughs> kind of makes you rethink that whole that'll do pig. <laughs> And the best part about this, the very best part was the minute this happened, every single member 
of the British uh, government was racing to Netflix to watch the first episode of Black Mirror. Well, yeah, because if you haven't seen it, 50 <laughs> points for Ravenclaw. I guess that seals it. I'm a Ravenclaw. I'm going to have to look that up. <laughs> I mean, if you haven't seen it, that was the first thing I thought. I thought people were making Black Mirror jokes on Twitter when I saw it, and I was like, oh, my God. No! What actually happened? I mean, at least it was a dead pig. At least he didn't violate a living animal. Well, this <laughs> We have to say at least it was. Now, the best part about this is not the allegations because true or not, these are still allegations. No, no. The best part is the entire British press spent the entire day speculating about whether or not the prime minister fucks pigs. Well, yeah. Has he said anything? Has he commented? He said he will not dignify... Now, this very carefully worded here. He will not dignify the allegations with a response. Mm -hmm. Very British. Very British and also very political because that's another way of saying, I'm not going to deny it. If someone... I'm shit. If someone comes up with... Because apparently, allegedly... There are photos of this out oh, there somewhere. Okay. Should those photos surface, a denial would be a lie. I have a photo of me at my first birthday party mowing down on a giant pig's foot. That's not the same thing, though. Not quite, no. Not, not, not quite the same. This is modern. This is amazing. That the, the modern politics, modern political reporting is speculating. You got to think like if you're what's his name, David Brooker, the black mirror guy. Yes. Charlie, if you're Brooker, that guy, Charlie like Brooker. you wake up and watch the news that day and you just got to be like, what did I do? What did oh I do? I'm a prophet. The only other thing I can think of like this is remember the lone gunman? Yeah. Remember there? Kind of accidentally predicted 9-11. Exactly. Yeah, that was fucking freaky. Yeah, weird shit happen sometimes. This is kind of like... in the Matrix. This is kind of like that, only instead of terrorism, it's fucking a dead pig. Yeah. Dude, you can't say pig fucker in front of the prime minister. Well, maybe if he is one. <laughs> Technically... He only received fellatio from the pig. And as we know from American politics in the 90s, that does not count as sex. What was even more amazing was Twitter was a lot of people on Twitter were defending him saying, oh, come on. All he did was put his willy in a pig's mouth. What's the harm? I mean, it was a dead pig. It was a frat prank. I kind of... I'm kind of of that mind, like I wouldn't do it, but it was a frat initiation. They do worse things. They do things where people wind up dead. So if they went to the butcher shop and got the head of a pig and were like, stick your dick in it for five seconds. I mean, that's not the See, worst that, thing. Tara, that's the, 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 the pilot episode of, of Better Call Saul. I'm not kidding. Is it really? It is. I haven't watched Better Call Saul. That's the pilot episode. Okay. J just, this is... No different than shoving your dick in a bagel. Well, it is different because the bagel would be kosher. <laughs> <laughs> and the bagel doesn't have teeth. One would hope not. Now, here's the thing. This is something that happened maybe 20, 30 years ago before camera phones were everywhere, before Facebook was everywhere. This is just a tiny taste of what presidential campaigns are going to be like. This is what I'm fucking saying. 20 years from now. Nobody will be able to run for office except Nobody. for the fact that we won't give a fuck because Donald motherfucking Trump is leading the polls in the, in the United States right now. So obviously we don't care. You know, if, the, here's Snooki the Snooki is going to be president in 
2030. Here's the difference between American and British politics. If Donald Trump had fucked a pig, his poll numbers would go up. Well, yeah, because he'd finally be embracing his own species. Oh, damn. Well. Did you see the Ask Trump hash hashtag today? Yeah, that was asking Such for moron trouble. decided to do a Twitter Q&A. It was, he answered like five total softball questions, but. Yeah, and the rest of us were like, trolling, just trolling. That shit was hilarious. So, moving on, sadly, because it, I don't know how we're going to top <laughs> this shit. Can you see her? Oh. <laughs> Sleeping. Yep, she's asleep. So, it was 20 years ago. 20 or 30, it's 2015, so 1995. That was 30 years ago, wasn't it? No, no, it's no. 20 years ago. 20 years, 95 is 20 years ago. 20 years ago, wonderful American film called Friday. Chris Tucker posed a question. How the hell do you get fired on your day off? <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm about to answer that question. And yeah, I played it in the wrong order, but that's okay. Um, no, that's the wrong, wrong one. I'll give you the other one. You'll have to get back to that. Okay. One. I gave you the wrong one. New York City bus driver accused of driving bus drunk on day off. Do they get to keep the bus? No, no, it, 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 was, it wasn't like parked in his driveway. Yeah, because I was under the impression they turned those in at the end of the day. Westbury, New York, an off-duty New well, York- that's Long Island. That's Long Island. Not right. Off-duty New York bus, city bus driver was caught driving a bus while intoxicated on his day off on Long Island. Alexander Copeland, 52, was arrested Sunday afternoon after police received several complaints about an erratic bus heading east on Northern State Parkway. Um, Coop, uh, Copeland failed the sobriety test and was arrested. Uh, as motorists merged onto the Northern State in Nassau County, they did a double take in New oh York God, City. Oh God, I'm a fucking Northern State, because let me tell you, the Northern and Southern States are pretty much always backed up with traffic anyway. A New York City transit bus was on a suburban parkway restricted to cars. Its driver appeared dazed behind the wheel. State police received a flurry of 911 calls. The displaced MTA bus seemed to be swerving and weaving across multiple lanes. Um, yeah, so that's like a bus that doesn't even belong. That's Nassau County. Yeah, that's that doesn't go on the freeway. Well, also, it's not the MTA. <clears throat> that would be L-I-double-R. So that bus came out of Queens or Brooklyn. And he drove that shit all the way onto Long Island onto a non-commercial highway. Copeland had the day off and was not authorized to be driving the bus. He returned to the bus yard, got behind the wheel of bus number 9057, parked it on the street and headed eastbound with no passengers aboard. It appears he picked up the bus earlier at Jamaica Bus Depot. He was en route to Medford. Yes, I know the LIRR is the railroad. I'm saying the MTA Transit Authority covers New York City. I don't know exactly what the Long Island buses are called, but... I, I, how do you... Just, you, you wake up, you're like... How did he get the bus? Like He went to work. He checked the bus out. Or apparently got the... Yeah, he picked up the bus. So and drove away fell down on the job there. Oh yeah. At the old dispatch. How drunk do you have to be to wake up and go, "Oh shit, I'm late for work on your day off." Yeah. That is amazingly drunk. Well, I took a nap when I got home yesterday, and I woke up at like 7 p.m. convinced I was late for a job I don't even work at anymore. Yes. <laughs> like freaking out that, oh my God, I'm late for work. And then I realized that not only was I not working yesterday, I didn't even work at the job I was dreaming about. Well, yeah, but then immediately you went, oh, I'm not working. I'm fine. 
You didn't go. You didn't run yeah. out the door. You didn't like hurry and get it get changed. You didn't go and check the yeah. motherfucker. Uh oh. Hello. Did I lose my connection? No, you're still here. Okay. Hey, hey, go look who's home. Daddy's home. I don't care. <laughs> Sleeping. <laughs> She's asleep. Dan's here, but she doesn't care. She's asleep. Little Miss gives no fucks. Our cat. So, moving along. Let's yeah, talk. Who's home? She doesn't care. She's more concerned with being the fuck asleep. That she usually is. So, it's. You want to take her? Yeah. He's going to come. Hello. Hi, Dan. What? What do you want? Sleep in. What? Oh, hi. Oh, now she gives a shit. She's been wandering the house since yesterday, just wandering around howling like he's hiding from her. And if she yells enough, he'll come out. <laughs> oh, hi. Feed me. Oh, now she wakes up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wh where the fuck you been, man? I'm really confused. Sorry. It's okay. I've taken us totally off track as my boyfriend reunites with the cat. So. And you look at her butt. We have had to contend in modern culture with the selfie epidemic, which, you know, good or for ill, people taking pictures of themselves and sharing them and being body positive. I'm all cool with that. Do you I know what am. we saw outside Universal? What? We saw a dude holding the end of the selfie stick and three feet away at the other end of the selfie stick, his wife talking on the still attached phone. Yeah. Like, just take the fucking phone off the selfie stick. What are you doing? I can top that. We'll swap a selfie stick for a boom stick. <sighs> Janesville man fires gun trying to take selfie. Those don't take selfies. Officers were called to an apartment uh, through 9 East Memorial Drive. Where did this take place? Madison. So this was, Wisconsin, I think, Wisconsin. Yeah. Yeah, Janesville, Wisconsin. So Scott um, Walker's fault. Yeah. Logan Douglas, 19, told police he accidentally shot around from a shotgun through his bathroom mirror. Police said he was trying to take a selfie at the time. The round went into the neighboring apartment. No one was injured. Douglas was arrested on suspicion of endangering safety by use of a dangerous weapon. Those don't take selfies. Like the, the little sight on your gun, not a camera. Many problems do we have here? I... Number one, why are you carrying your weapon around indoors? Number two, why are you trying to take a picture of yourself carrying your weapon around indoors? Number three, why is it loaded? Why is the fucking weapon loaded? Like what? if it's just for taking a selfie, you don't need to load that shit. No, does not need a <laughs> and firing it into the neighboring apartment. Thank God no one was hurt. But can you yeah. you imagine it's the middle of the evening, you're sitting down, the Emmys are coming on, you're watching Adam Sandberg. Suddenly someone pulls an Elvis on your TV and they aren't even in the room. There was an old urban legend that used to go around Long Island, Long Island. about uh, someone sitting in, a woman sitting in her back yard sunbathing that got shot in the stomach from someone in a neighboring yard just shooting Should up into up the sky. It's potentially possible. Anything like that ever actually happened, but it's a, you know. That is possible to do. Yeah. But still, mother God, fuck Jesus. A sh <laughs> That's not what they mean when they say take a shot. Get a shot of this. Not no, what it means. Not what it means. Not what it means. <sighs> Just, why would you, why? 
I don't understand people who take gun selfies anyway, but I don't understand gun culture in general. Yeah. So I don't know why you need a picture of you with your firearm of choice. I don't even know. Because America. Uh, well, you just got back from Florida. I did. I survived it. You didn't think I would. Yeah, you're lucky because... Guess I got a lot more loofahs now, though. I never want to hear the fucking word loofah again. <laughs> well, it's been a while. It's been a while since we've directly had an absolute straight-up Florida man story. But we got one. And you'll be kind of happy you left, Tara. I was happy I left just because of the humidity. I don't know how people exist there. Like, suddenly I get why everybody there is crazy. Because you're pretty much sweating all the time. Florida man suspected of smelling women's feet at library leads police on scooter chase. And given that you're sweating all the time, that's gross. Police say they've arrested a man several days after a complaint someone was spotted crawling under library tables and smelling a woman's feet at a Florida International University. Miami-Dade police say they charge 52-year-old Eddie Wan uh, with violation of sex offender registration, fleeing and eluding, reckless driving, aggravating assault, and resisting without violence. That means this isn't the first time he's done something like this. Because he's a registered sex offender, which admittedly, it's not hard to become a registered sex offender. But I get the feeling this wasn't one of those clicked on a porn link cases. No, no. Police had pre previously released a notice warning students that a man was spotted under a table along with the description and photo. Thought I see a man matching that description was spotted Tuesday on a scooter Miles from campus, officers attempted a traffic stop, but they say the man fled, eventually crashed, and was arrested. Okay. Did he think women wouldn't notice him crawling around under the library table? It's the perfect crime, they'll never know. Cause... We're gonna notice. Just... <sighs> what in the name of... How does, how do you get, how do you end up under a table trying to smell a strange woman's feet? Hello, cat. <laughs> Without her permission. Yeah. And think to yourself, I'm in a good place in my life. You are not in a good place in your life. How do you, how does this? This seem like a good idea. It's not. Did, did you, did, what was going on in your head? Was there like a little conference in your brain going, hey, brain, got a plan. What do you think? It's like inside out. Only yeah, it's... I was going to say, it's like the little conference room and inside out, except everybody's fucked up. Yeah, only instead of, you know, everybody being, you know, different, there's a new emotion in there, and it's creepy. Creepy is the emotion. There's a whole bunch of them, and they're all running the buttons. That's what it's... Here's the thing, gents, that you might not know about women. Contrary to popular belief, we can, in fact, hear and see. They I know, notice that's, that's this fucking mind-blowing. But, like, when you're muttering behind our backs... When you're staring at us in public like a fucking serial killer, we can see you. When you're crawling under the public table at which we're sitting and sniffing our feet, we are aware of your presence. Don't do shit like that. That's that is that's a good way to get your damn nose broken. Yeah, cuz my instinct would be to kick. Oh, kick, stomp, flail. Like, if you feel something brush up against your feet, don't you automatically kick it? Well, no, because for the my, my first instinct would be it might be a puppy. So I have to look and check because if I just kick, that'd be like I kicked a puppy and I'd be sad. But yeah. 
But, you know, once you looked under the... Once someone has looked at you, you're like, what? Do you say anything? Hi. Could you could you get rid of those shoes? <laughs> no. Could you get rid of yourself? Thank you. But you know, <laughs> it, Florida this week, little tame because uh, oh, the UK. I was, I was there keeping an eye on things. Yeah, because the UK. They're stepping it up. Fuck, yes, they are. Um, man sexually attracted to playground equipment banned from anywhere with a slide. Man with a fetish for children's playground equipment has been banned from going anywhere which has a slide. Christopher Johnson, age 46, was arrested after simulating a sex act with a slide at Stoke Green Park in Coventry. It's his second slide-related offense. You know they have those that you can install in your own yard. Big sick You can just get your own. Kids! Play! Right here, dead pig heads are fun. Kids play on those things, okay? I don't have kids. I don't particularly want kids. But even I have enough shred of decency to go, you know what? I'm not going to mess with that because kids play on that. You're not particularly going to rub your junk on it. No! Jesus I mean, Christ. It's generally good form to not rub your junk on anything. <laughs> in public anyway, but especially things intended for children. Especially if it doesn't belong to you. If it doesn't belong to you, don't rub your junk on it. Have you been watching Wild Kingdom too much? Do you know, like, if I rub my dick on it, it belongs to me. No! That's Why the a... slide? Why this? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't fucking know. Okay, casual ace Jeremy, slides do not need any additional lubrication. Like, I kind of get the sandbox, because if you wet the sand, you could do something with that. And How? <laughs> Dude, it's a slide. Well, yeah, but that's like sand grating on your junk and ow. That can't be good. We had dudes in jail installing dice under their fucking foreskin. Ugh. People do weird stuff to their dicks, is one thing we've learned. <laughs> Dan came back at just the right time. Yes, in prison, men install dice under their foreskin. That's a thing. Oh, well, if it's just that. I got four of those. <laughs> anyway. Can, can, if you have to, if you must, if there is no other way for you to reach your jolly place than to fuck a slide, can't you install one at home? Yeah, get one of the little Little Tykes kits. Put it in your garage. Close the door. Enjoy all your slide-related activities. Don't, don't. Privacy of your own home. Don't. Don't just on the I'm slide. I'm still working on how you fuck a slide. I don't know. Do you want, to, Tara, why do you want to know? I do want to know. Why? I don't understand how you don't want to know. I don't want to know. The of that are intriguing to me. Why? Because. Just because. How do you not want to know that? How are you not? Because I am a sane person. And I want to stay no, that not. way. No, you're you, not. Are, you you ask these questions, Tara, and they're like they're like the Necronomicon of stupid. <laughs> it's like you're opening a door and but you don't could, want. But if I could crack the stupid, I could rule the world. That way lies idiocy. With my magic wand, my little cat. Daver in the channel says, do what thou wilt, but keep it the fuck away from the kids. Yes, exactly. 
Jesus H. Christ. Yeah, I never figured out how someone fucked a door either. We did that story a while ago. How do you fuck a door? I don't want to know. Do you slam yourself in it? That doesn't seem fun. Finally, tonight. This is this is a first. I think it might, might be my I, I believe it's a first because last week. Our final story was about a woman who was driving along, hopped out of her car and let it keep going. Yes, but she didn't have a good reason. This and that was the first time we'd ever heard a story like that, much less we had video of that. So it was the first time we'd ever encountered that type of story. Guess, guess fucking what? Guess fucking... Keyholes, if you have a dick small enough to fuck a keyhole, you have other problems than your fetish. I don't accept that as an answer. Indiana mom jumps from moving car after seeing Spider leaves her nine-year-old son in the back seat. Woman from Indiana jumped from her moving car Friday when she noticed a spider crawling on her shoulder. Angela Kipp, 35, was backing out of her driveway with her nine-year-old son in the back seat when she saw the spider and panicked. When Kipp jumped from the car, her son moved to the front seat to try and stop the vehicle. Poor little nine-year-old kid. That's a badass kid, by the way. <laughs> Unfortunately, badass kid, but did not know which pedal did which. Yeah. The boy accidentally hit the gas pedal instead of the brake and drove the car into a school bus. Oh, anal doorknob, says the channel. Okay. Anyway, I kind of sympathize with this because those rotten little eight-legged bastards tried to take my leg and I hate them. And I have woken poor Dan from a sound sleep to come and kill one for me. The thing where 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 she loses me here is she jumped out of the car and the spider was on her shoulder. So that's not going to save you. Also, there was a child in the car. Yeah. Not OK. Now, nobody but was on board the bus. You haven't even saved yourself because the spider is on you. If the spider was like in the car, I get it. Get the fuck away from that spider. Although I might stop the car before getting jumping out. But that's just me. It's a spider your situation. None. It's a spider. Uh, J uh, Jay Walker. You remember the what happened to my leg last year? Jay Walker in the channel. Hole in my leg. Jay These little bastards are horrible. Jay Walker in the channel says every man for himself, Timmy. Spiders are bullshit. Uh, yeah, but I still have a ginormous scar. They said I'd have no scar. I have a huge ass scar. It's a spider. Yeah, a potentially venomous little fucking machine of death. You can just foop. And maybe it fucking bites you or maybe it's little itchy hairs get on you. And you don't get superpowers, I know from experience. <laughs> If I got superpowers, I might not be as pissed. Just All I got was a lot of medical bills and a big fucking scar. Okay, weary Katie. Toy Story! Yeah, it's the first thing I'm thinking of. It's that old episode of Dr. Tran. Uh... Flame Star! But yeah, maybe it's... It's not like the airlines where they say, put the oxygen mask on yourself and then save the child next to you. No. Really worry about the child in the car. That kid is going to have some issues with his parents for the rest of his life. Yeah. Because when you're nine years that's, old. That's going to affect the trust just a little bit. When you're nine, you kind of trust that your mom and dad know everything in the world. And they know what, the, and they are smart people, and they are the smartest people you know. And they, and suddenly your mom, in a split second, transforms into a complete Nimrod. Yeah. 
Your world got flipped, turned upside down. <laughs> okay. Your life got twist turned upside down. WC Witt in the channel says, Timmy, can you clean your room? Mom, remember the time you jumped out of the car with me inside? Have I? I'm sure that I've told you the story about the time <laughs> my sister fell out of the car while it was moving. No. Why is everything relevant, Tara? How do you do this? I've led a very interesting life. So I think I was like four because I wasn't in school yet. We went, my mom took me to pick up my sisters at school because we all had doctor's appointments. So you should not feel good about the brown recluses in your house. They're bullshit. Burn your house down. It's the only way to be sure. Anyway, so my sister's getting, I'm in my car seat in the back seat, you know, because I'm a toddler. My oldest sister gets in the front seat. My middle sister, who's closest to me, um, gets in the back seat next to me. Only she doesn't quite get all the way in the car before my mom takes off, thinking she is in the car. So my sister is hanging on to the open door with one hand and like the door jam on the car with the other screaming. <laughs> and it was raining that day. So her ass is going through every puddle. I'm told I was laughing my ass off while my other sister screaming, mom, mom, get off the car. <laughs> Luckily we were in a school zone. So mom wasn't going that fast and she stopped the car and we brought Nancy back in the car. But, uh, the sad part is we did not have time to change her clothes before we went to the doctor and her ass had gone through every puddle. So she went in like soaking wet in her whole midsection area. But other than that, she was fine. How do you do that? Apparently I'm the greatest NPC ever written. <laughs> got an antidote for every horrible thing that comes out of this fucking show. You're like, oh, hey, this happened to me once. What did you say once? You said I was like if Rose from the Golden Girls was crossed with Saw. Yes! <laughs> well, back in St. Olaf, during the Purge. Because the first thing we learn tonight is... You have a problem with the spider, but if the spider's on you, not in the car... It's kind of like a haunted vagina. You can't run away from it. You cannot escape your you own vagina. You have to vagina. deal with that problem. You cannot outrun it. We've learned that if you really have a weird kind of fetish, keep it at home to yourself. Figure out a way to do that. Yeah, without... With a consenting person. Don't involve the kids. Leave the kids alone. Leave, leave the chillins alone. That ain't right. We've learned, and especially, you're not fooling anybody if you're pervert on a chick. They know you're pervert on them. We're aware of you. They're, you're not you fooling. You in fact, hear and see. Also, trying to escape the police on a scooter is kind of bullshit. Not going to work out. That's not going to work out. Um, we've learned exactly how the hell you can get fired on your day off. Yeah. You tried to do the job drunk. Uh, all you had to do was stay home. That's all you had to do. You yeah, all you had to do was not do any anything. of the things you did. We've learned that selfies don't require ammunition. No. And finally, we've learned that at this point in, in world politics... You can derail the entire fucking conversation. With the head of one dead pig. One dead pig and your dick. Which you can buy at pretty much any bro gro any butcher, really reputable butcher shop. Also, be careful the color loofah you have in your car in Florida. I never... Stop saying loofah! <laughs> God damn it! You might get yourself into trouble. I don't want to hear. Look, never said no, the word. Lo it's Lufa. banned. It's banned. Lufa. It's f I, I, cut her mic. What lufa do you use for pig fucking? I don't know. It's a good question. What color lufa says I like to be filleted by dead pigs?
I can cut your mic, you know. Yeah, but you never do.